energised the system, what if they energised? They've actually got people out to come and vote, but if you judge the debates by what these three politicians were saying, it was roughly, more or less, exactly the same. So if you have a political elite which doesn't really permit big dissent within their ranks, why should they encourage the emergence of educated citizens? Who question, who doubt, who are skeptics, because that is what philosophy has been as a tradition, historically, for a, from a long, long time in the past. One of the first great philosophers of the medieval world who questioned divine truth in a time when to question it led to death was Ibn Rushd of Andalusia, known in the Latin world as Avarois, who in the 12th century said there is a difference between divine truth and reason, and the two do not go together. And when asked by a critic, a mullah who was a critic, he said, so do you believe there is a soul? Ibn Rush replied prudently, I believe there is a soul, but you know something, I cannot prove it. Why? Because to talk like this was to encourage debate, dissent, skepticism. And that school of philosophy created other schools which challenged and doubted. Till we reached the 18th and 19th and 20th centuries, after the Enlightenment, when all this continued. So to see now in the 21st century a university which considers itself to be a university <clears throat> saying that we do not need philosophers and we do not need a department of philosophy and we're going to stop because it's not cost effective, because it doesn't make us money, is an incredible indictment of British society and British culture today. Have no doubt about it. by money and that's all that matters and the fact of the matter is that even that even from their own criteria that isn't true because this world they are talking about exploded imploded in 2008 this world of zombie capital this world of debt capital this world of financialization this world of derivatives this world of making money on the expense of, on the back of others and they used to tell us we can't have the state providing all the money for this that or the other for health for education you have to get sponsorships you have to get companies in you have to sell off schools to private companies why because it's not the task of the state but when the entire financial system of capitalism crumbles then what does the market do? It goes on its knees before the state, and the state is asked to bail them out. A state that tells us it can't spend more on education, it can't spend more on health, it can't do this or that because there's no money, finds the money to bail out sick banks, which should have been put out of their misery in most cases, with small, uh, small deposits. billions to wage wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and elsewhere. They can find billions to do that, say that they have no money for education. So what we have to say to this state, and those who act as its guardians, the political parties and coalitions, very, very simple questions. Do you or do you not want a proper education system in your country? Do you now want a regression to what used to exist in the early 20th and most of the 19th centuries, where education, proper education, just became a preserve of the rich? Do you want to return to that system as you're doing elsewhere? And we're going to fight you. We have to say that. We 
can't just sit down and do nothing because your futures are involved and not just your futures, the future of those who will come after you, your children. This thing of we just live on this own world, a consumerist world, we just shop, we watch TV, we go to clubs, it's, it's, it's ephemeral, it's a bubble. You can't live inside a bubble for too long. Sooner or later that bubble erupts. And so many of you who have not thought about this before the philosophers here were sacked, essentially de facto sacked, must think about these things now. Because we're not just talking about philosophy, we're talking about philosophy in a larger sense of trying to change the conditions under which we live which is what many, many philosophers have argued for for a long time, from Spinoza onwards, one of the great philosophers of the 17th century. Baruch Spinoza challenged authority, challenged his own religious authority, expelled from the synagogue in Amsterdam for saying that the Old Testament was just a set of folk tales and fairy stories, and whose political philosophy defended democracy, defended the rights of the Dutch who were fighting to get rid of the Spanish from their country. An, uh, an active philosopher, as many philosophers tend to be. Hegel, Marx, constantly engaged with the world. So those who want to get rid of philosophy want to get rid of doubt. And without doubt, the world cannot go forward if we become citizens, not so much citizens, but yes men and yes women, who go once every five years to vote. That is not good enough. And we have to fight for a better world. Now, Let's see what's happened here and how we can move forward. I said to Peter Holward, who's been ringing me up and keeping me informed, he's a, a friend, writes for the New Left Review, of which I'm one of the editors, so we're in touch with Peter. Wrote a wonderful book on Haiti. Um, I said, we cannot simply win these battles locally. We have to use the strength we have nationally to bring to bear on this case and to help others who might be in a similar situation. So don't think that this occupation has been a waste of time. And those of you who marched out now should be proud of yourselves. Yes! in Zagreb in Croatia 10 days ago and I spoke about what was happening at Middlesex and afterwards many young people came up to me and said it sounds just like Croatia. We had student strikes and student occupations not to defend one department but to defend an education system. So I said what was, why were you striking? Why were you occupying? They said for a better quality of education from schools to universities. That's what we were fighting for. So it's A, you're not alone. B, this is a general problem now in many parts of the world as to what is going to happen to our education system. So I think, and I've suggested this to Peter, but I'm saying it publicly so it's taken <coughs> up, that we need to call a national conference, mobilization, convention, call it what you will. In order to defend philosophy as a discipline and to defend the quality of education in our universities. And we have to appeal not just to people on the left, but to people on the center, even right-wing philosophers who are extremely worried at what is happening to the education system. We have to spread out. We have to 
unite with people we may not agree with on many